and start talking just a little bit about what uh, programming is and what's the difference between procedural programming and objective programming. I'm going to start right at the beginning just because it's going to be a whole lot of stuff to, to cover. And in this case, I just want to highlight the differences in between procedural and objective programming. I'm going to use the example of a pizza restaurant and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do is we're talking about this programming. We're talking about procedural versus objective. Procedural programming is a little bit old school. I'm just going to say that. Objective-oriented programming is a lot newer, I guess you could say, probably as of 1988. Um, the disadvantages of, of procedural programming, and I'm going to give you a good example. I'm going to try to anyway. This is very difficult. If you guys are like, well, he's a little off on this tutorial. Um, I'm not. It's just I'm trying to simplify this down to terms that everyone can understand. Um, and what I mean by that is that the more experience you've had with programming, the more you understand it in a different way than you would understand it just starting out. So the disadvantage of procedural programming is you have to reformat code for each, everything that in inside of your code. And when you're going to debug, you have to look at the whole code over again. So let's say you got this program to run this, uh, we're gonna say this program of life. It's not actually a computer program, it's just the routine that a pizza restaurant has to run through every day. So in this pizza restaurant, you got, okay, you gotta go there, you gotta open the door, you gotta walk over to the door, you gotta go ahead and unlock it, you gotta turn on the open sign, then you gotta walk over, you gotta balance the cash register, then you gotta keep going, then you gotta make some dough for the, for the pizza, and then what you gotta do is you gotta get out the ingredients for the dough. So now get out the ingredients for the dough, you get out the bread, you get out this other stuff. Uh, then you're gonna go and you're gonna get out the tomatoes, you're gonna get out the stuff to make the sauce, and you're gonna uh, get out all this, let it sit, then you're gonna get the dough, you're gonna make the dough, then you're gonna cut up the cheese, you're gonna make the cheese cut up, you're gonna do all this different stuff, and they're all sort of in the same program, right? Well, object-oriented programming basically breaks these ideas up, and it takes one unit. Okay, let's have one unit actually open the store. Okay, let's have another unit actually make the dough. Now let's go ahead and have another unit uh, make the sauce. And then let's have another unit uh, cut up the cheese. Let's have another unit uh, do put the cheese on and put the toppings on. The advantage is it uses the same objects to do multiple things. So you can use these same objects in different scenarios. So let's say an object oriented programming, you want to make a whole wheat dough. So you're still using the unit to make dough, but it's being manipulated just a little bit. I want to show you what I'm talking about here in the next uh, screen. I got some examples here, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And I want to show you a procedural example, uh, pepperoni pizza. This is for procedural. This means you're making all these procedures. So you're getting out the cheese, getting out the flour, get out the eggs, get out the sauce, get out the pepperoni, mix two cups of flour with two eggs, one and a half cup water, uh, one packet yeast, seven, let sit, eight, toss the dough, nine, cut up tomatoes, 10, stew the tomatoes, 11, add some oregano, etc. You got this big long list of stuff. So after, this is what you show up after. After extensive specific procedures, here's your pizza. But what if you wanna make Hawaiian pizza now, but you didn't leave any room over here to actually add any other toppings because you got the pepperoni out. So in procedural, you gotta make a whole nother list of what you wanna do in order to make something like a Hawaiian pizza. So for example, I took the idea of the restaurant and break, broke that up into units, and then I broke up the units of actually making the pizza. So instead of having to rewrite write the whole procedural code, now what I need to do is I just need to change the toppings area. I want to show you this. This is where objective programming simplifies things. Instead of writing a whole other list of procedures, voila, you just, you break it down into units. In other words, you make the dough, consists of getting out ingredients, mixing them for the dough. What if you want whole wheat dough? Yeah, you use the same unit called make the dough. Same method, function, make the dough. You have make the sauce. Maybe you want the sauce less sweet. You want the sauce more sweet. So you're going to use that uh, that unit of making the sauce, and you're going to change some variables in that and adapt it for that instead of having to go out and rewrite the whole code. Now, let's say you want to cut up the cheese. Same as the sauce, okay? 
you're gonna go ahead and do what it is that you're wanting to do in order to modify that unit. Let's go to the next one here. I want to show you. Uh, we're gonna go to the next one, and here's what we're gonna we're gonna say. We got some results here. The results of this is, and I don't want to like you know that way blurry. So let's pull in here. We got some results here. It's easily debug the objective language but the procedure is a little old school in other words you got to let's look here old school if you have a problem you have to review the whole code if you want to just make whole wheat pizza dough you got to go back through the whole code and you got to find out where you were placed and what and what you were doing objective seeing is more efficient if you have a problem in how the sauce tastes you just change the sauce recipe or the object in that case now let's talk about cars real quick I love cars and I want to give you a little bit of theory real quick it's gonna be real quick if you don't understand right at the very beginning it's okay so let's talk about cars but let me give you an example we all know we all probably got a clock radio that wakes us up in the morning so a radio has an on button an off button and maybe it has an mp3 player so you got states of the of the player is on button off button right now the behavior is what you're doing, are the methods or the functions you're using to put them in the certain states. In other words, how to turn it on, how to turn it off, how to plug in the MP3 player, how to play the song. Those are all the behavior. So their states, which is an on state, an off state, an MP3 play state, play state. Okay? behavior are the methods or the functions that you're using to interact now take a car for example the car already has a gear ratio transmission how it shifts how the motor works those are states but you control how you use it through methods for example you use a method of flooring the car when you want to peel out or the method of braking like you're not actually controlling how the car brakes but you're using the method to get it to slow down now the object or car in this case still in control of how you use it take for example you want to shift to fifth gear then that means that your car knows it has to reject any values lower than one and greater than five I guess you could think of it like an automatic the car knows to get to fifth gear what it has to do it doesn't skip and go right to fifth it works through the other gears to get to fifth now in other words the car is an object inside your life it's only a part of your life right but the car doesn't affect how the like take for example your car is its own object it doesn't affect how the blender works it only performs car like functions so in other words you could easily move your car to another garage and it won't cease to be a car just as you would could sell your blender to someone else and they could use it this is called modularity if you've ever heard of modular homes meaning they're built somewhere else and then they're moved somewhere else and they're used this is the same way of thinking of of objects in objective programming it means if I move my car to your house it's still a car you can still use it you may modify the way that you use my car maybe you have some kids and I don't have kids so you're gonna put some car seats in it you're gonna change the modification but it basically does the same thing that's called modularity same way with my blender maybe you're gonna use my object my blender that I always use to uh, make smoothies and instead you're gonna you're gonna basically put in a whole bunch of green stuff in yours and then you're gonna blend that up because you like being healthy so likewise these work on inheritance in other words meaning if someone else has your car and you drive another one you still know how to operate the new car because they are familiar tasks and ways of doing things you don't have to learn it all over again if I get a new blender I don't have to learn how to use a new blender all over again really because it's got a lot of the same functions, a lot of the same things. I just adapt it to my needs. So that means that a lot of information is hiding, right? And that's awesome about Objective-C, is that a lot of the information is hiding. So you take, for example, you drive an automatic Corvette. I don't really know why you'd want an automatic Corvette. But we're going to say it's in the shop. You get a Chevy Cobalt to drive while it's in the shop. You don't have to look at the engine to know how it works, right? because you can inherit certain traits of how to drive it, but also what's hiding under the hood, you don't have to look at it to drive it. Meaning there's certain parts of the car that's hidden 
but you're adapting the module for your own needs, meaning that a lot of code is already done and you don't have to actually know a lot of code. So also, code can be reused, meaning if an object already exists, let's say that Chevy Silverado, and you want to incorporate it into your routine or program of life, you can, but you have to resituate your life a little bit. In other words, you might have to put more money towards it if you're used to driving a Toyota Prius. So you're gonna to have to put the way that you use it inside of your program is gonna change a little bit. Also, you gotta change the variables. So in this case, the variable of how much gasoline I'm putting in every, I gotta change that for my program. So maybe this is gonna take a different value than it would have taken for my Prius. Okay, now, Take, for example, the cat and the lion I showed you at the very beginning. Now, I made that code up, and those are two different objects. And some people would say, well, that's not objective. Yeah, it is, because they're sending messages and codes to each other in order to wait for the other person. I didn't say, like, wait 25 seconds and then roar to the lion. I, told, I sent him a message through the cat. So take, for example, a cat and lion. I could use the same code for each object and just change the appearance of the cat or lion. They could change roles. And all I had to do is change the variable that gave them their own suit. Like, right? Like the suit, what their their costume, what they look like. The cat can now become the lion because I just changed that variable. The lion can become the cat. And you have this little cat roaring at this big lion. And so it wouldn't really be that cool. But And then you could do opposite things without having to reconstruct the code. That's what's awesome. Now, object-oriented program also lets you remove a component without affecting the rest of the program without affecting how the rest works, like if your car quits working, you get rid of it and get a shiny new one without having to know a lot about how it works. Now, we're gonna go to the next thing right here. So, this is the example. You got rid of your car. Now you get a shiny new car. This person says, I think Ferraris are best, right? But they can still operate any car. This person thinks that Fords are the best they can still operate the class car. And this person doesn't even care. So you can, honestly, that's, that's the awesomeness of objective programming. Let's go to this. I gave a Java example here. And the reason I gave this Java example is because, and this only forms one. So this is one object in the Java program. Now, this forms one role in the whole program. And what I made up is I made an object here with the class car. So this is about cars, but this is one object. And what we wanna get at the very end, we wanna see uh, what the gear is and what the speed is, right? So we declare at the beginning an integer gear, and the gear equals zero, and also an integer speed. So I wanna show you uh, what the possible possibilities are in the car class, the possible implementation of car. So the syntax of Java, programming language probably looks new, uh, but the design of this class is based on previous discussion of car objects. Now, the field gear and speed represent the object state. Okay, these are the object state. And the methods change gear, this is a method void, which means the, the user has no interaction with it. In other words, it happens in the background, a void function. Change speed and uh, change gear, speed up, apply brakes, finds its interaction with the outside world, this object, right? <laughs> so, you may have noticed that the car class doesn't contain a main method. That's because it's not a complete application. It's just the blueprint for cars in general that might be used in an application. The responsibility of creating and using new cars objects belongs to some other class. So, this is basically, this gives you a prints a state sending function to system out, and then you're gonna print, and then it's gonna give you the gear and the speed. These are all functions that are gonna work inside of your bigger program.